Hi everyone. Okay, this week I want to talk about a really difficult topic. Um, and this is hopefully a topic that not a lot of people have uh, currently in their lives. Um, but if it is, I want this podcast to really speak to you so that you have some hope, so that you have some strategies. And if it's not, pay attention because if it happens to you, you'll know what to do. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Colary. I'm a child and family therapist and a parenting coach and the founder of Connected Parenting. And welcome to the Connected Parenting Weekly Podcast. Join me every week and we'll tackle everything from temper tantrums to bedtime to sibling issues to teenage angst. Parenting can be so wonderful, but it can be so hard. Parents often say to me, hey, can you just come live at my house? This is the next best thing. Let's do this together. So occasionally over the last many, many years that I've been working with families. No, it's not that occasionally. It's happened a fair bit. Um, there is a situation where a child, and it's usually a gladiator child with big feelings, absolutely rejects one of their parents. I don't want daddy. I hate him. I don't want him near me. I, he's not driving me anywhere. Um, or I hate mommy. There, there's, a, there's an absolute... Um, rejection. Now it's quite normal for younger kids to be like, I want mommy. And, and that's fine. That happens all the time. So I don't want dads to panic and think, Oh my God, is this happening? It's quite normal, especially for little kids. Um, and in those situations, all you do is say, I know mommy's so soft and she's so wonderful and I want mommy too. I, I get why you want mommy. And then what usually happens is you're not busy pulling them away from mommy. So they relax and they go, okay, fine, you can lie down too, or okay. And then you just do that with a non-defensive, loving kind of, I get it, kind of way, and then your child will come back to you. But I'm talking about where like weeks go by and they don't speak to the parent, or they barely speak to their parent. Um, and, and really in hurtful ways, um, no matter how hard that parent tries, they reject that parent. There are few things that are that painful as a parent to have your child absolutely fully reject you and you make yourself so vulnerable and you put yourself in a position every time to try to approach them to try and engage with them only to get a door slammed in your face it's a really awful thing so there's a couple of reasons for this sometimes kids have such big feelings that they just can't handle any kind of um discrepancies. So if, if there's a really drastic difference in parenting style, they will choose the parent um, that they feel most comfortable with. And and it's it, this is not easy, easy to predict because sometimes they'll choose the parent who's much more strict, who is more um, structured, who is pretty tough on them. Um, and in some ways that makes sense to them and they can um, make predictions and they know what's expected. And um, and then the parent who's sort of softer and more emotional and um, kind of more all, all over the place would be the one that's rejected, which you wouldn't think would happen, but it does. And sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes it's the softer parent, the one who um, you know just really wants to understand what's going on and isn't isn't always the best at setting those limits. And they want to go to that parent um, because they feel more comfortable in that setting. So it, it's really difficult to predict when and how this happens. But one of the things I say to parents is... It, if there is this angst, if you want so badly for them to come to you and they feel that, that's going to be an added layer of emotion for them. They're going to have a difficult time with that and they'll often reject you more because of that. The, the most important thing is to really be, remain neutral. Like, I love you and I can't wait for the day when you're happy to be around me and I'm going to keep trying no matter what. Um, but I understand that you're going through something right now and I want to respect that and I'm, I want you to know that I'm out here and I'm going to keep trying, but I will respect you and I'll back off a little bit when I feel like it's too much. Um, and then sort of knowing that you get it, but you're not constantly pulling them can make a really big difference. I love to use conversational mirroring here. So I don't know, your child walks in the kitchen and they're like, there's no food in this house. There's nothing to eat. You know, instead of saying, well, that's ridiculous. There's all kinds of stuff in the snack cupboard. And, you know, if you're not, you can't be that hungry then. If you're, you know, you sort of want to go right to that hard parenting. They then feel this little bit of a drop in their stomach and they walk away mad. And you walk away feeling rejected. So sometimes in those moments, it helps just go, I know, right? Like you're hungry, but you don't know what you want. And it feels like there's nothing in the house. I hate that too. And then walk away. Don't stand there waiting to have a hallmark moment. Just walk away. Drop these little pebbles have these little moments where your child goes hmm well that felt a little better 
Resist um, the desire to be a, a teacher all the time. Have moments with your child where you just are there, where you're just experiencing each other for a moment. Um, we tend to get caught up in um, making everything a teaching moment and that can make parents, uh, sorry, kids want to um, not be around us. Uh, who wants that all the time? I mean, it is our job, but not all the time. Um, the other thing is to look really neutral when you get rejected. And this is a tough one. So get out. I don't love you. You know, I don't want you. I want mom. Um, just to sort of say, well, you know what? I love you. And it doesn't matter what you say to me. I will always love you. That really hurts my feelings, but I get it. I'm going to go away. And don't, and don't do it in a fine, that's fine kind of way. I hope you have a kid one day that does this to you. Don't do that. Just walk away and go, I get it. I know you love mom. I, I get it. I love you. I'm going to keep trying. Um, and then you walk away and then your child will go, hmm, well, now I feel bad. Now that doesn't feel so good. And they'll come and they'll find you. Now what I want you to watch for are these little connectors. You'll have a moment like that. Your child will go, hmm, that felt different. They'll come and find you and they might ask you a question or they might give you a little bump or they might say, oh, hey, dad, can I, there'll be these little moments. And what you don't want to do is, oh, okay, oh, this is great, oh, this is going to be great, we're going to have a great, don't overdo it, don't don't get all crazy. Um, be really subtle. If it's too big, the child's going to go, whoa, whoa, that's too much, that's too much, I don't want that, and they'll reject you again. Um, and you'll, you'll end up in this really hurtful cycle, so just be cool, just be really calm, be really neutral. You know, sometimes be the one to pull away first, hey, bud, that was great, I really enjoyed that, and then go do something else, let them come to you. Um... You know, if, if you're constantly sort of pulling at them and feeling, um, they will pick up on the, the angst. These children, um, they're like little radio receivers, so they'll pick that up. And it's really important to be neutral. When you have a situation where your child is rejecting one parent over the other, and sometimes it lasts, you know, just for a little while, and sometimes it lasts a little bit longer, you can actually have a huge impact on how much it lasts by using these techniques. Um, it's often better to let the other parent be the one doing what I call the hard parenting. So there's soft parenting and hard parenting. Hard parenting is go to bed, brush your teeth, do your homework. You know, what's your lesson here? You know, how can I make you a better person? Um, and then there's soft parenting, which is just soothing, connecting, mirroring, cuddling, baby play, laughing your heads off, just having spontaneous, um, joyful moments together. When you have a dynamic where the child is clearly favoring one child over the other, for a little while, just go on a soft parenting diet. Just be the one, work it out with your partner or your spouse, um, that they do more of the hard parenting. They do more of the get up, do your homework, and you um, just sort of come in and soothe and, and joke around and um, have some lovely moments and see if you can find something interesting that you can do with that child. And it could be, it could be something like, I don't know, going to Laser Quest, or it could be, um, a ropes course or it could be you know going to a climbing gym it could be something really simple like going to Tim Hortons and playing chess or playing Uno and having a hot chocolate it does not have to be a big thing but it could be something that you do together and your child looks forward to doing um, there are lots of feelings when you have a parent like well this child doesn't deserve it and they're so mean to me and I'm just getting kicked around all the time well you know why should I be the one but the truth is it's not going to change otherwise you have to be the one to do it you are their frontal lobe they are having difficulty with this split with these this sort of black and whiteness of things and sometimes it's just easier to pick a side when you're a kid that's overwhelmed so you want it to make it you want to make it easy you don't want to make it so easy for them to pick a side and you want to be um soft enough and gentle enough for a little while, not forever. I'm not telling you to do this forever. I'm telling you to do this for now so that you repair the relationship, so you strengthen the relationship. And then once the, re once the relationship is strengthened, then you can do the hard parenting because if you do it beforehand, it's an injury to them. They feel injured. They feel that it hurts. Um, and often the other parent who has the a different kind of relationship with them, they can be the one that um, that does some of the hard parenting. And I've seen this work over and over and over again. And, and often it doesn't really take that long. And when you do come in and do the hard parenting again, you've got to connect before you correct. You have to have that soothing stuff first. Hey, you know what? I get it. You're in a hurry. You just want to get home. You've had a crazy day at school. I get why you've thrown your bag there. But would you do me the biggest favor? Could you go back and hang it up? That would be awesome. And when you say it that way, they're like, okay. Not they won't every time. Sometimes they go, no. 
and that's a different podcast. Um, but most of the time, honestly, most of the time I'm like, okay. And then don't do, oh, thanks. That was so great. That was amazing because it's giving them too much power. It's giving, mm, they're like, hmm. So if I don't do that next time, that could really tick my dad off. I got to put that up here and remember that for next time. It's really about being very, um, very neutral, very rooted to the ground. Um, and when you have these moments where your child is, is giving these little connectors, stand still for a minute. Don't don't jump over to them. Let that let them keep coming to you. Write them down. Keep a log. Make notes so that you can remind yourself that this is actually happening. And I've had lots of families over the years where it's been really tough. It's been so painful and so tough for the other parent. Um, but the child comes out of it and, and a little while later everybody's balanced again. And usually that hard parenting, soft parenting switch can work really, really well. So remember to do the conversational mirroring, the chit chat mirroring in the background, stick to the soft parenting for a little while until you feel like the relationship is strengthening. You have to do some, but if you do, make sure you're connecting before correcting first. And let's see how this goes. This should, this should make a difference. It is not easy, it is really painful. It can be quite hurtful when you have a child um, that doesn't wanna to talk to you. And if it's a bigger problem, you know, seek help before it goes on for a long time. Either contact us at Connected Parenting or there's lots of other uh, parenting uh, experts, family therapists out there that can help you, okay? It's a painful one, but it does pass. It does get better. Hi, I'm Barrett Caleri from Connected Parenting. I hope you enjoyed our podcast. And don't forget to check us out on the web at connectedparenting.com and like us and follow us on Facebook.